Hello, 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 welcome back to Hunter Tune. Today I have the Mustang in the shop, and uh, not because I'm wanting to work on it, uh, but I screwed up. I screwed up big time, and uh, I don't know what the outcome is of this situation currently, but I screwed up. And I think this is just a, a byproduct of just having too much stuff and too much stuff to do. Um, and just kind of biting off maybe more than I can chew. I, I, it's very hard to maintain multiple like performance vehicles. And this, the Mustang's been kind of neglected for the last like year. Um, I only took it out to the track once last year. Everything worked great, but uh, the car did sit all winter. It's now April and I, would go start the car probably like every week or two, uh, just to kind of make sure, you know, I, I like to kind of get the injectors firing and I like to just kind of get the car up and running once in a while uh, to get everything moving. Uh, I think it's good for it. If you leave it sit for extended periods of time, uh, stuff can happen. And I think the worst thing for vehicles is to leave them sit. Um, I think the more they're used, the longer they last, in my opinion. Uh, but like I said, I just have a ton of stuff going on and I want to focus on the Hondas and stuff this year and like the end of last year just doing more Honda stuff so the Mustang kind of got put on the back burner a little bit and I tried to sell it. I uh, didn't really have anybody that was like interested um, which at the time I thought was a good price of $20,000 for this car that runs eights uh, but it just uh, ended up not, go you know, nobody ended up buying it so I hung on to it. And I'm like, well, I'll try again maybe next year to sell it or maybe we'll do something else with it. Um, I haven't really been in love with this car because it's pretty much a track-oriented build. Um, it's not really streetable currently. Um, it's pretty much a trailer car that goes to the dr drag strip and then races and then comes home in the trailer, which is fine. But uh, yeah, so anyways, moral of the story, I'm gonna get right to it. I got this whole thing tore apart. Uh, I got the intake off of it, and I'm about to pull the turbo kit, and I went out, I don't know, it was last week or the week before that, I went out and I was actually going to move the car. It hasn't been that cold here this winter, um, there's only been a couple days where it's gotten down to freezing, and that was earlier in the year, and the car was running fine, no, no issues. However, like a week or two ago, I went out and I, start, I tried to start the car, and it just clicked and like the starter, it sounded like the starter broke. Uh, Cause if you guys don't know, this car is a 16 volt system and this thing cranks faster than like a R1, you know, like it cranks very fast. And the fact that it went rrr, 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 and it just stopped. And I'm like, uh oh, you know, I, I honestly was like maybe an injector locked up from E85 sitting in it or whatever, uh, but that wasn't the case. So I pulled the injectors out of it thinking you know, I'll just go see what's up. Maybe there's an injector that's stuck. And to my surprise, when I pulled the fuel rails off of it, there was standing water in the intake manifold. Um, and there was no, wa no way water from the outside got in, but I think my intercooler cracked. And I think that's maybe a pitfall of this design is if something does go wrong and it does start leaking, it pours water into the motor. So you guys know, or maybe you don't know, but this car runs a Holly Low Ram with the Tick Performance air to water sandwich intercooler. And I haven't had any problems with it, it's been great. Uh, but I think maybe something cracked inside of the intercooler. I don't know if it's because the water froze or what, but like I said, the time frame when the car supposedly cracked the intercooler, it wasn't that cold out. It was colder in the year before that and there wasn't any issues, but maybe this was just its time, or maybe it was a hairline crack and it got bigger or something. Um, but yeah, anyways, it filled the fucking motor with water. I'm gonna show you guys a video that me and T-Bag took the other day. We drained the oil out of it, and this is what we saw. Oh my gosh. Look at that's all this straight water, dude. Yeah. Actually, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Wait till the oil starts coming yeah. out. That'll be second. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. Ah, good flow. Good flow. Good flow. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, good flow. I wish I had that good of a stream. Huh. Funny. Well, when, you're, when your car doesn't turn over, drain the water out of it. <laughs> so, needless to say, I screwed up. I, I screwed up. It's just neglect. Um, it's impossible to maintain more than, like, maybe two race cars. Um, I've been focusing on the S2000 lately. Um, I also have been doing some stuff with the black EK Kurt. Uh, K20 turbo over there. I want to do some more stuff with that um, And then I have my sedan with a K24 in it. Um, I have another EK hatch outside and my EG hatch and then I picked up this WRX uh, there's just uh, And then I have like seven or eight bikes too that I'm trying to maintain and whatever plus uh, new family life now and uh, It's just there's a lot of I got my irons in the fire with a lot of different cars and it's just honestly irresponsible because I'm not able to upkeep all of them. Or if I was upkeeping all of them, it would be a full-time job and I wouldn't have time to sell you guys injectors and do huntertune.com. So it's been a very tough balance and you guys wonder why you haven't seen car content as much. It's because the website's been doing really well and it's been taking 95% of my time up. So the car stuff really has been put on the back burner and it's been, now it's gonna cost me because who knows if I've hurt the motor or whatever. I pulled the intake off of it and the car still does not crank over. So I'm assuming the cylinders are full of water. Um, I hope it's not rusted and I don't know, what the heck. So yeah, it sucks. It really freaking sucks. So yeah, I, like I said, I screwed up and um, this shit just happens, I guess, whenever you, um, don't pay attention to your vehicles, you know, if you just, like, leave them sit around, stuff wears out, I think, faster when it's sitting there versus when it's being used. So, I think my best advice for everybody is, if you got a car, maybe you should use it, or you should do some really good, like, storage stuff. If you're gonna like leave it sit for extended periods of time because don't don't learn the hard way like me because now I really don't know what I'm gonna do I actually really wanted to sell this car and maybe I still will in its current state I don't know um, yeah I don't really freaking know what I'm gonna do I my initial plan this year was just to I honestly wanted to sell the Mustang and focus on the S2000 more and then my turbo EK hatch uh, because I have a bunch of stuff for that and I wanted to do more Honda drag racing this year with the single cam build that I plan on doing and like all that stuff. It's just like 900 things to do and then when I think about all these things to do, I don't do any of them because, I don't know, I'm just mentally sick I guess. I don't know. But I'm sure everybody out there has the best advice in the world and they can uh, Tell me exactly what to do down in the comments. I'm sure they're gonna tell me exactly what to be doing But figured I'd share this with you guys. I'm not gonna Hide stuff that breaks on the channel. I haven't had anything break in a while because well I haven't really done it much racing or done much of anything But like I said, this is one of the failures that happened and it happened from uh, just sitting so I'm gonna get the turbo kit off and then I uh, might pull the harness through and stuff like that and just kind of clean up the engine bay a little bit. And then after the turbo kit's off, I'd like to pull the spark plugs out of it and uh, crank it over again and see if we get more water out of the cylinders. Cause I don't want that shit sitting in there any longer than it has to. <laughs> all right guys, so I got all the spark plugs out of it. Try to position the camera so you can hopefully see. There was water that came out of a few holes just uh, pulling the plugs out and the plugs look, uh, they're like green almost, it's disgusting. I don't know if you can tell, but the plugs are wet and they're like green almost.
Whoa! I hope that got on camera. Uh, it, it splashed me damn near inside the car. That's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, there was some water in it. Good thing is, is uh, it's spinning freely now. Uh, beforehand, it would literally just go click, clunk, clunk. Water is not good inside the engine. So, yeah, now what, I guess? Fog the cylinders, should I put my bore scope in there and see if they're rusty? Oof, let's, maybe we should try that. And I'll put the bore scope down there and see if the cylinders are rusty at all, because if the cylinders are rusty, I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Uh, but if they look clean, maybe I'll just fix the intercooler and kind of throw it back together. Or, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do. All right, so I got the plugs pulled out of it and I'm gonna put this uh, camera in the spark plug hole and I'm gonna see if I can see any rust on the cylinders. Um, I picked this guy up on Amazon. It's an Endoscope C30. This was super cheap. Uh, I wanna say it was like under 50 bucks and it works great. I still haven't even charged it since I got it. It's almost dead, but I've had it for like six months and I still haven't even charged it. So the battery in this thing's pretty good and uh, it has a little light on the end of the camera so you can see in those dark holes. Uh, but let's go check out the inside of the cylinders and see if we can see anything. All right, so I'm gonna try to wipe off the camera lens here to get the best picture we can. So let's see what the damage is, if we can even see anything. So I'm gonna try to set the camera right here. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it. And in the spark plug hole we go. Oh, get in there. There's the uh, cylinders. There's a little rust water. Um, I don't know, I'd probably run it. The pistons look really good. I wonder if I can get... Yeah, these cylinders don't look terrible. So I'd probably run that one. Let's try the next hole. Let's see what this one looks like. Uh-oh. Is that a crack? Can you guys see that in the camera? I can't tell if that's a crack. Maybe not. There's still water in this one. <clears throat> Sorry if I uh, am over the top of you guys right here. There's the ridge. Still water in this one too. I don't know. It's kind of tough to say, honestly. It is tough to say. One thing I know is there is still a little bit of water in the cylinders, so maybe I should try to blow them out quick and then try again. All right guys, so I got pretty much all the water out of the engine at this point, I blew it all out. Uh, and looking at the intake valves, the intake valves actually still look pretty good. The pistons look good, the cylinders are maybe a little bit duller than they were when I first put the motor together, but that's kind of to be expected. Um, I, I don't see any major rust, maybe just some like brown discoloring from the, the dirty water that was in there. Um, but I don't think it's, I think it's fine. Um, I, it sucks because without pulling the whole motor apart, I don't really know for sure, but um, yeah, I don't really know what to do from here. If I put this thing back together, uh, with a new intercooler if I spend that kind of money for another one or if I Change up the turbo kit and maybe do some other stuff or if I just sell it. I don't know um, I think the smartest decision currently is to just get rid of it as is to somebody if they want it If you guys are interested shoot me an email huntertuned at gmail.com um, You know, maybe I'd consider just getting rid of it as is uh, if I did keep the car, I want to clean up the wiring and I want to clean up some stuff and maybe 
maybe redo the turbo kit uh, so I can put like an actual alternator on it and uh, an actual water pump and not the electric water pump. The electric water pump's okay, but um, I think putting like a truck pump on it and accessory drive would be cool. But it's just tough with this current turbo kit. It doesn't really fit an accessory drive that well um, with the down and forward headers, uh, twin turbo kit set up like this. Um, but it would be able, I'd be able to get rid of the air to water and maybe just put a air to air intercooler on it. I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I'm really in love with this car either to like want to put the time and money back into it again. Um, I don't know. It's been fucking super fast, super consistent car. Whenever I did race it, it would run in the eights every single freaking pass. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It just sucks because I built I I would like to actually keep the motor out of it So maybe if somebody did want to buy it, maybe they could buy everything without the motor if they were questioning the motor I don't know. Like I said, if you guys are interested, maybe shoot me a DM or an email or whatever uh, But I want to take the uh, intake manifold apart quick and check out the intercooler and see if we can see a visible crack anywhere on the intercooler itself All right, so I just got the lid removed and nothing is blatantly cracked on the top side at least there is a little bit of water in here but i don't know it's it's so hard to see if there is a crack anywhere um where it would even be unless i pressurized it but uh yeah it's it's tough to see a crack currently so i'm gonna remove it from the low ram side of it and then uh we'll get a better look at it once it's completely off all right, so we got the <clears throat> intercooler removed all the way, and uh, it's still pretty hard to see if there's any issues with it, but uh, there is some bowing, not bowing, but like, there is some, like this spot's a little lower right through here, and um, yeah, I'm assuming it's probably cracked inside of here somewhere, somehow. There's maybe a little bit of bowing right here. Um, it's tough to say, you know, but I'm assuming it's pretty much garbage at this point. This side looks great, uh, but the bottom side does have some like bowing in the core. So yeah, it, it sucks because these things ain't cheap. Um, so like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna go with another one, uh, like an air to water style, or if I'm gonna do something else. I'm not 100% sure yet, but you guys will have to let me know what you think. Oh, I'm upside down. There we go. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know what you think, um, what you want to see with the car, or if we should just move on to it and stick to Hondas, which is what my plan is for this year. Uh, but I can't have this thing just, I, I don't know. It sucks. I wish I had more time. But the older I get, the more time just flies by, you know? It's tough to uh, prioritize everything i'm only one person and it's um it's exhausting some days to know why am i keep going upside down there we go um it's just exhausting some days and um you know we all screw up we all screw up we all do uh it's just i don't really know what the right decisions are a lot of times you know it's uh it's tough to know what to do like I said I don't have endless amount of time like I used to to just like thrash this thing out and put it all together and fix it and whatever I probably could but um, then I wouldn't have time to do all the other stuff I want to do and what's more important in life I don't know I don't freaking know all right guys so I'm gonna do a compression test on the motor just to kind of get a quick health check to see how the motor is if it's all like super even um, I might just run it uh, if they're not even compression on all the holes, we might have something else to look into. So we're going to uh, check out every hole and see what, what they look like. Can't hear. Oh, I have to film? Yeah. My beautiful assistant is helping me today. Hi. <laughs> so we're doing a compression test. We already did the test on this cylinder and it got up to 160. Uh, this cylinder was at 160 and now this is the second uh, cylinder that we're doing was also at around 160 but it was falling and I don't know if it's because the gauge is leaking or if it's got a bent valve or a cracked cylinder or what you 
You should see when I let off, if you can hear any air coming out of here. It seems like an awful lot of tasks for me to do at one time. <laughs> so I just pulled the radiator cap off and I'm gonna crank it over and see if we can hear any air leaking out of the cap here. That'll tell us if it's got a cracked cylinder. There was air coming out I don't know, I was focused on this task. Well, it's still got that much pressure in the cylinder right now, so there should be air coming out of here. There should, or should it be? See if it's moving. So maybe the gauge just wasn't all the way tight, but this one's at like 180 or so. That first one was probably around that too, wasn't it? 180, 160? I forgot I already. I'll have to crank maybe one more time. Should we try again? I'm trying to let it crank like six or seven times. Next cylinder, cylinder number six. I don't like that it's not facing me. Was it still climbing? I don't think so. What is it supposed to be at? Uh, I would expect this motor to be around 200 because it's like 11 and a half to one. Okay, so that one's definitely good. Uh, this la the one that we just did was like 180, wasn't it? Or was yeah, it like 190 probably. So, so far we have like 160, 190, and 210. They're all supposed to be the same? I mean, I don't know, I feel like probably <laughs> close to the same. And it stopped climbing, yeah. Okay, so we have like quite a bit of variation <laughs> in the cylinders. Um, could be from a mix of things. Uh, maybe some of these cylinders aren't coming all the way to the top because the rods are bent. Slightly tweaked rods, I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't even want to test the other side. We got some variation, let's just say that. You're really not gonna test 180, the other side. 165, what was that last one? 165. 165, 210, 190, and then the one before that was like 160 or 180. Probably should, shouldn't you? Yeah. Looks like it freaking matters, it probably has to come apart anyway. That hole is a little tight. I have some hearing loss. I'm sorry, do you want to hit the button instead? No. Two fifteen. Two fifteen. Wow. Okay, so one eighty on that one, two ten over here. I feel like this variation could be from just a little bit of wear. I don't know. It's gonna hit on all eight. I'll tell you that much. It's not like it's gonna, it's not like the compression's low enough to not make power. <sighs> Could be like head gasket too. Who knows? I'd call this motor healthy, honestly. <laughs> it's got over 150 on every hole. It's it's plenty fine. Two forty-five. Holy crap! 240. It's probably even 250 if you really want to. Wow. That's a really good hole. <laughs> That's weird. That some of them have 240 pounds and some have 180. That's a lot of variance. Damn it. What's wrong, guys? Tell, the experts need to tell me in the comments. What's wrong? What's wrong with it? Does that bent rods? And that's why some of the holes are lower. Does it have bad head gasket? Does it have bent valve? Are the lifters not pumped up? Because it hasn't ran in a while and there's no oil in it? Oh wow. It's 
supposed to pop air out of there like that? Out of where? The hole. What hole? Over there. The exhaust? Maybe. It was puffing out of here? I think so. Yeah, that's normal. 210. Yeah, this could be just because the motor's dry too. Who knows? It's probably junk now. Because I cranked it over without oil. Are you being sarcastic? I don't know. It's probably a little hurt. So there's the compression test. I don't know. What are we gonna do? Get rid of it? What do you think we should do? Me? No. Sell it. Wow. Somebody come pick it up. <laughs> I just don't know if I have time to fuck with it. Or More so, to. you don't, yeah. I don't want to. You can always make time for things you wanna do. Yeah. So anyways, have a great night and a better tomorrow, guys. God bless everybody. And um, thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you learned something or laughed or made fun of me. I don't know. See ya.